Hello world, welcome. This is the news bulletin on Kashimawa TV. I'm your host Christy. Thanks for joining us. On the news bulletin, France rejects accusations made by Burkina Faso against embassy staff. The French Foreign Ministry said in a statement on Thursday it regretted Burkina Faso's decision to expel French diplomats and staff, some of whom were assigned to the French embassy in Burkina Faso. We reject the unfounded accusations made by the Burkina Faso authorities against our staff, it added. Burkina Faso's military government has expelled three French diplomats for alleged subversive activities, the foreign ministry said in a letter seen by news sources on Thursday. In other news, Nigeria strikes deal with Shell to supply $3.8 billion methanol project. Nigeria has struck a deal for Shell to supply gas to its proposed $3.8 billion brass methanol facility, resolving a major hurdle to a final investment decision on the project. The Minister of State for Gas said on Thursday, Nigeria, which holds Africa's largest natural gas reserves of more than 200 trillion cubic feet, has struggled to tap the commodity due to capital constraints and a lack of infrastructure. Minister Aparipe Ekpo said in a statement that the gas supply and purchase agreement, crucial for the brass methanol project, will be executed next month following successful talks with Shell's Nigeria CEO and executives from other companies involved. The gas supply and purchase agreement will secure a long-term gas supply from a Shell-operated joint venture for the methanol production facility that will be built on Brass Island in the oil-rich coastal Bales estate. The project includes a gas processing plant, a methanol production and refining site, and product export facilities. Moving on, the United Kingdom Rwanda asylum plan to be debated on April 22. Britain's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda will be debated on Monday, April 22 in the House of Commons, the government said on Thursday, setting the date for what it hopes will be the last stage in a protracted parliamentary battle over the scheme. On Wednesday, Britain's House of Lords rejected for a fourth time the piece of legislation needed for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to push through one of his flagship policies. Under the scheme, the government wants to start sending asylum seekers arriving illegally in Britain to Rwanda to have their claims processed. The bill will continue to be passed between both Houses of Parliament until the final wording is agreed. Parliamentary time was also set aside, if needed, for further debate on April 23rd. Tunisia jails journalist Mohamed Bawaleb for six months. A Tunisian court on Wednesday sentenced prominent journalist Mohamed Bawaleb, a fierce critic of President Kai's side, to six months in prison on charges of insulting a public official, his lawyer told news sources. It is a black day for the judiciary and freedom of the press. It is a message to journalists, be silent or your place is in prison, said Jamal Edine Bawaleb who is the brother of Mohammed. Bawaleb was detained last month, which the journalists' union said was aimed at silencing the voices of journalists. The imprisonment of Bawaleb reinforces activists' fears that authorities are increasingly restricting freedoms ahead of presidential elections expected this year. Said seized extra powers in 2021 when he shut down the elected parliament and moved to rule by decree before assuming authority authority over the judiciary. Since Tunisia's 2011 revolution, press freedom has been a key gain for Tunisians and its media has become one of the most open of any Arab state. However, politicians, journalists and unions say that freedom of the press now faces a serious threat under the rule of side. The president, who came to power in 2019 in free elections, who has rejected such accusations, saying he will not become a dictator. Two more journalists Shatha al Haj Mubarak and Latfi al Hiduri, are in prison, while other journalists and activists face judicial investigations due to posts on social media or criticism of the authorities and the media. Lastly, on a sad note, Kenya's military chief killed in Kenyan military aircraft crash along with 10 people. A Kenyan military aircraft has crashed along with Kenya's military chief, General Francis Ogola, who was among 10 people killed when their military helicopter crashed shortly after takeoff on Thursday, President William Ruto announced. The aircraft, which had been on a visit to troops deployed in northwest Kenya to combat endemic cattle rustling, came down just minutes after leaving Chepchul Boys Secondary School in West Pocket County, Ruto said. Two soldiers survived the crash and were in hospital, he said, 
adding that an air investigation team had been sent to discover the cause. Our motherland has lost one of her most valiant generals, Ruto told a news conference. The demise of General Ogola is a painful loss to me. A distinguished four-star general has fallen in the course of duty and service to country. Ogola was previously the head of the Kenyan Air Force, before rising to deputy military chief and then being promoted by Ruto last year to head the military. Ogola joined the Kenya Defense Forces in 1984, where he trained as a fighter pilot with United States Air Force and as an instructor pilot at the Kenya Air Force, according to a defense ministry profile. Now that's all we have for you viewers on the news bulletin. Get social with us, subscribe to this channel Kashimawo TV. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Christy.